For me, 2020 has been kind of dry with Nintendo Switch releases from Nintendo themselves because, well, a lot of them really didn't interest me. Sure, Animal Crossing is cool, but I've just kind of moved on from the series. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is a great game, I'm sure, but I already played that game on the Wii and the new Nintendo 3DS, so when Paper Mario The Origami King was announced and given a quick release date, I was happy because I thought, you know what, this looks really good. Now today I want to talk about the truth when it comes to Paper Mario The Origami King, because this game seems to be splitting some people on whether it's a good game or a bad game. So what is it at the end of the day? That's what this review is going to tell you. What's up guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about the truth about Paper Mario The Origami King and see how I feel about this game in my full review. So Paper Mario The Origami King tells the tale of Mario and Luigi going to Toad Town to visit Peach in her castle for a big event that is supposedly happening. When they get there though, the town is rather barren and Peach herself is acting rather strange, and it's discovered that King Ollie, the Origami King, has turned her into a piece of origami and transposes the Peach's castle to a different area via streamers attached in five separate areas. Now in order to access the castle, Mario must remove the streamer surrounding the castle in order to restore everything back to normal. Mario is accompanied by a character named Olivia, who is also a piece of origami that happens to be King Ollie's sister in his quest to end King Ollie's madness. Now I know, I know, it's not a deep story or anything like that, but there are actually some rather interesting story elements that occur within the game that I enjoyed. Along your voyage, you'll be linking up with other characters who will help you on your quest. And one of the characters actually has a very interesting backstory and a climax to their own personal story that actually left me a bit shocked because it touched on some rather mature subject matter. Overall though, it's a very lighthearted tale and that leads into the writing of the game. Every Paper Mario game has always had a focus more so on comedic writing and the Origami King is definitely no different. I actually caught myself chuckling and laughing out loud at some of the dialogue and the scenes that take place in the game, and the writing in the game for the characters is just as clever as ever. Gameplay wise, Paper Mario The Origami King has some elements of previous Paper Mario games along with some new additions as well. One thing I think the game puts emphasis on over other games in the franchise is the collectible aspect. Along your journey, you will find various toads in various locations, and rescuing them can do simple things like letting them cheer you on in battle, we'll talk more about that in a minute, or allowing you access to their various shops. Each area has a set amount of toads in it, and the game will let you know your completion of that. Aside from that, there are also various other collectibles hidden away or locked in chests that when discovered are viewable in the in-game museum, which is pretty cool, and there are other unlockable things in the game as well. While traversing the various landscapes in the game, Mario also gets access to a few different vehicles, such as a boot cart that allows you to ravage through the desert area, and even some aquatic stuff in the form of a boat and a submarine. I like all the different mechanics that the game throws at you throughout the adventure, as it helps keep things fresh throughout. When you're exploring areas, you'll notice that some places have gaps in them, in which Mario can use confetti in order to fill in those gaps and access those areas, and also find things within those gaps such as coins. Besides that, there are certain points on the map where you have an icon that Mario can use his thousand-fold arms, which allows you to interact with the environment that you are currently in. You can use motion controls for them, but honestly I turned them off the second I could because I would rather just use the analog sticks. As you play through the game, you visit various shops in which you can get new weapons such as better boots and hammers, various items to help you in terms of health, and accessories that you can equip that help you do things like add more HP to Mario when he's in battle or a better guard technique. As you may have noticed, I have not talked about the combat in Paper Mario The Origami King yet, and that's definitely a very divisive area for a lot of players with this game. The best way to describe it is a turn-based puzzle action RPG combat system that is really broken up into two types. There's standard battles and then there's boss battles. The standard battles have you rotating a variety of circles to try and line up the enemies either in a straight row to jump on them or in a group of four that's done in a 2x2 manner in order to use a hammer on them. Depending on the amount of enemies you are going up against, you have a set number of turns that you can do in order to achieve this. At first it's a little bit confusing, but eventually you get pretty used to it and it becomes rather second nature. The aforementioned toads that you rescue play a role in this as well, as if you get in a pinch you could spend some of the coins you've accumulated in order for them to give you health, help line up enemies, and even do some basic attacks on them. 
In order to do more damage to both standard enemies and boss battles, you can time your attacks by hitting the A button at the peak of your jump or when you have a hammer that lights up in order to dish out the most damage, so it keeps you a bit on your toes as you're constantly having to press the button. The boss battles play out a little bit differently than your standard battles though. You still have the slider system, but instead of using it to line up your enemy, you use it to traverse a path that you create with arrows that are on the map. Lining up the arrows creates a bit of a more tactical approach, as sometimes there will be squares on the map that will harm you, items that you'll want to grab, and in order to do an attack, you have to actually land on an attack square at the end of your movement. I will say that while the normal battles are pretty easy for the most part and I never really felt in danger, the boss battles can be a bit trickier and that was the handful of times I died in the game that was on various boss battles. There are also sub boss battles in the game that are based on elemental energies that you can use against the main bosses controlling the streamers, but don't think that those sub bosses are any easier as to me, the hardest and longest battle that I incurred with playing the game was actually against one of the sub bosses in the game. With that being said, even if you do die within a boss battle or a standard battle, there's not really much of a huge penalty besides, well, just wasting your time. There's save points right before all the bosses, you can call in toads to help you out in the boss battles, and you can even purchase or find 1-up mushrooms that will automatically bring you back to life if your HP does dip below zero. I feel like the combat will be hit or miss for some people, and I could definitely understand that, but I think it's pretty solid once you get the hang of it. That's not to say that the game is devoid of any challenge though, but it's not necessarily in the combat in the game, it's within the puzzles in the game. Everything starts out easy enough within the game, though really the first chapter of the game is just an elongated tutorial, but as you get deeper into the game, you start to come across some very cryptic puzzles that are pretty fun to figure out. You can always ask Olivia for help and she'll give you some clues, but a few of the puzzles I came across legit stumped me for quite a while. One of my main complaints about the game actually involves the puzzle system though, because for some ungodly reason there are a few slide puzzles in this game. I don't know who out there needs to hear this, but slide puzzles are not fun. Nobody wants a slide puzzle in a video game. There is one slide puzzle that legit annoyed me so much because it had a ton of moving pieces in order to try and figure out where I was going and it was literally driving me insane. Thankfully though, the game will sense your frustration and allow you to spend some coins and will solve the puzzle for you. Honestly, it was the best 3000 gold coins I ever spent in the game and it allowed me to keep going. Presentation wise, Paper Mario The Origami King is honestly a stellar experience. The graphics in the game are absolutely beautiful with great use of color, interesting environments and great attention to detail. The underwater segments look absolutely fantastic and sometimes the game will use realistic pieces of things like rocks and water to really make it stand out. The game does a really great job in feeling rather large as well, as there's a lot more open areas that you end up going into, and each streamer based area has its own theme to it that makes it stand out from one another. The audio in the game is really great as well, mostly with the music. There's no voices or anything like that, but there are some very catchy tunes that you'll encounter, and all the sound effects sound like they should. Besides the stupid slide puzzle stuff, I do have a few other complaints when it comes to the game. Sometimes Paper Mario the Origami King feels like it's dragging on a little bit, and while the game doesn't have an in-game timer or anything like that, I know that I played for at least over 29 hours because it was positioned higher in my playtime list than Outer Worlds was, which took me about 28 hours to beat that has an in-game clock. That's not even 100% completing the game, but some of the missions do have a sort of bait and switch mechanic where you think you're done and you're about to advance, but then you have to go do more stuff before getting to the main objective, which just kind of annoys me and feels like padding. Also, the coins are way too generous in this game, and you never really feel like you have to go find more coins because they always sort of just come to you. The final thing that's kind of weird is the way the leveling system in the game works. You don't gain XP or anything like that for doing battles, but instead you get life bursts and power upgrades at various points in the game, so it works on a steady incline that way. However, since you don't have to gain XP from battling, a lot of times I found myself just trying to more so avoid the random battles rather than doing them because the fact that aside from earning more coins, there's really not a whole point in doing the battles themselves. Now sometimes these battles are unavoidable and sometimes they are good because they give you things like access to different areas, access to a thousand fold arms area, or even access to more toads, but still, I think they could have done a better way to try to make you want to do basic battles more often. 
Overall though, I honestly was pleasantly surprised with Paper Mario The Origami King. I've played every Paper Mario game dating back to the original N64 game, and yes, the franchise has changed quite a bit since the N64 and the holier than thou Thousand Year Door on the GameCube. And yes, this isn't a sequel to a Thousand Year Door on the GameCube like many cultist fans have wanted, but you know what? That's okay with me. Now, would I like to play a game like a sequel to A Thousand Year Door? Of course I would, but it's been over 15 years since that game. Maybe it's time to sort of move on from it. Really, when I look at the Paper Mario franchise, it's a lot like the Star Fox franchise to me, which there are two older games in the franchise that people always say they want the series to return to, and often overlook the fact that there's probably a reason that that hasn't happened yet, and yet they deprive themselves on some of the good to great games because of this bias. Paper Mario The Origami King is way better than games like Sticker Star or Color Splash, and it really surprised me just how much I ended up enjoying this game. If you can look past the fact that this isn't a Thousand Year Door 2.0 and you go into this game playing it with a fresh set of eyes, I think you'll find an enjoyable puzzle action RPG game that, yes, it does have some flaws, but I feel the positives far outweigh the negatives. And shockingly enough, like I said, this is the first game for the Nintendo Switch that was a first party game that I bought in 2020, and I definitely don't regret it. Paper Mario, The Origami King. Y'all be hatin', we gettin' rings. All right, so those are my thoughts on Paper Mario The Origami King. Like I said, I enjoyed this game more so than I thought I would. It was definitely a very fun adventure, but it's definitely not a traditional RPG. It definitely doesn't feel like Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, or anything like that, but to me, that's okay. I know there are a lot of purists out there who want that Paper Mario, a Thousand Year Door 2.0, and that's cool, man, but you gotta look at this game for what it is, and I think that Paper Mario The Origami King on its own is it's definitely a very fun title and one of the better games that I've played in the year of 2020. I mean, it's way better than Deadly Premonition 2, let's just be real about it. But let me know your thoughts about everything in the comments section down below. Did you end up picking up this game? I actually purchased this game off the Australian eShop on Thursday so that I could spend more time with it and I'm glad I did because this ended up being a much longer game than I originally anticipated. I figured it would have sort of been around the Super Paper Mario game that was around the Wii era that in terms of length and whatnot, but this ended up being a lot longer than that and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications check out other videos on the channel as well and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later